So, okay. Um, it's the governor's orders, right? The virtual meeting, we're recording the meeting. That's all I remember from it. <laughs> Does that work? Oh, Bonnie, you're on mute. Let's see, here we go. Um, no, basically we are, um, the, the uh, meeting is being recorded as per virtual, uh, virtual and um, we will be taking minutes of the recording. So with that, Miss Mary, you can start off. Um, so we do have five members, so we reached a quorum. Um, and the first order of business per the agenda is the approval of the old minutes. Um, did folks get a chance to read it? And are there any issues with it? Okay, so we can, um, somebody wanna move to approve? So we have Pam. I, I move to approve the minutes from previous. Second. Kara. Yes. So um, I guess that takes care of that item, right? You just have to vote on the minutes. Oh yeah. Um, any objections? All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Um, open issues, old business. Uh, we wanted to talk about the barn uh, historic designation. Do we have an update on that? Is it Bonnie or? As far as I know, we're all set. I did um, email Mary Dunn today from the state historic group, but she never replied to me. So as far as I know, we're set. If they need more information, they know to get a hold of myself or Jim. So there's been no, dis I can't remember what the decision was. What? Where are we at in the point now? Um, they have all the paperwork, it's been approved. The council's passed, every, so we're good to go. Okay, excellent. I don't know if Jim is on, but he might have another update, but that's all I have. I know Jim is coming out if he's having a hard time getting on or what, so. Yeah, because we're gonna move into the um, the subcommittee reports soon, and I'm sure he'd want to be here for that. Um, so why don't we do this? Why don't we? Um, I think we're we're good with the barn historic designation. There's really been no change since the last um, update, so I think we're good um, as far as we know. So we can move on to the new business, um, which I think we were going to do a roundtable on just a report out from the subcommittees. Um, are there any, we have, um, as far as I remember, we have the farm committee, right? And then we have the field and trails. Um, and we, do we also have a third committee, uh, organ, like an organizational committee? Does anybody? That was sort of lumped in with the farm. That was lumped in with the farm. Okay, cool. Um, so do we have anybody from the farm committee that wants to report out? Who was on? Who was the chair of that? I can't remember. Well, sort of Cindy. Well, yeah. Um, but, want, me to, want me to start out, Jenna, with the? Yeah. Why don't you start? Then I'll go. Okay. Jim had a part to talk about, but we can cover for him if we need to. So why don't yeah. you? Go ahead. Okay. Well, we had um, a proposed name as being Keisha Community Farm and Recreation Complex or Center. Uh, the name is a nod back to the Keisha family and implies the farm would be open to the community. The mission has four parts, preserve and operate a historical farm, donate fresh fruit and food and produce to mitigate food insecurity in the Wethersfield community, provide a community space for active and passive recreation, and provide educational programming related to food and agricultural production. Um, as Jenna will go on after, you know, having a mission is necessary for a nonprofit. So Jenna, I don't know if you wanna take it away. Oh. Okay, sorry, I'm telling my kids to be quiet. <laughs> okay. So um, basically, what we talked about um, was in, in this committee, as uh, Pam was alluding to, um, 
was creating an operational plan for this farm. And so in, in doing that, we think the best recommendation to make is to turn this into a nonprofit that would manage the property. Um, and so, you know, as Pam said, we need a mission in order to have a nonprofit and um, that will help guide our operations for this. And so we think, you know, because of the um, three listening sessions that we had, the survey that we did, all the good research from University of Hartford. Um, and then we, you know, we talked to New Inn Community Farm. We, we as a subcommittee also went to Masaro Community Farm in Woodbridge uh, to tour the site because they're very similar to, in the end, what we're going to propose, you know, to you guys, maybe to town council. Um, they're a nonprofit and, and so is New Inn Community Farm. And we think that we can incorporate those top needs that the town identified through those the survey and the listening sessions um, within the nonprofit. So um, we know that these other two models that we looked at, New Inn and Masaro, they can be financially self-sustaining um, with no burden to taxpayers. And that's, that's proven, you know, we can look at their uh, business model, so to speak, and, and, and see that it's a viable option for us as well. And, you know, even looking at Newton Community Farm, we have considerably more acreage to work with, which could in turn provide either more farming um, land or just space to um, provide recreation in a community space. Uh, so I don't see any reason why something like this couldn't be successful if it's successful for Masaro and for Newman. Um, it's sort of difficult to fully predict the mix of activities that we can have on the farm because you know, and Jim will speak to this. Hi, Jim. Um, what we really need is a land use study to really evaluate, you know, the different types of land that's on the property, wetlands, farmable land, that kind of thing. Um, but we think that, hang on one second. Thank you. Um, we think um, given what we know of the land right now, the land can support farming in a CSA program. Um, it can support educational programming for kids and adults, active and passive recreation, and open space and walking trails. And those were the what was identified from residents as kind of those, they, those were the ones that flowed to the top when we, when the University of Hartford kind of compiled all of that data for us. So, um, we also think um, we can address some of the community concerns through incorporation of a nonprofit. Um, like I said, you know, town, Residents were worried about cost to the town. Um, we think this can be self-sustaining. Um, we can kind of monetize the activities that are going on on the farm. Um, the CSA program is what largely funds the operations at Masaro. And I believe Newton was the same way. Um, but that kind of powers their farm operations. Um, we can also monetize activities that are going on and the programming that could be going on on the farm. So kind of like, like the pay to play. Um, we, are, we would propose to get a large chunk of money through donations, either money or in-kind donations, you know, can residents donate their skills to build something for us or to renovate the roof on the barn or something like that. Um, you know, either through money or, you know, monetary donation or just by doing it, um, you know, tap into the community that way. 
um, other types of fundraising and then grants. But in order to do any of this, especially um, like the grants, the first step is to incorporate as a nonprofit. Um, and then some of the other concerns, the community concerns that have been brought up along the way, like parking um, and, and just the traffic in general. Yeah, there probably would be some increased traffic, you know, just because there's going to be something happening on the property. Um, but we're hoping to find ways, again, we would need to evaluate through a land use study, but um, find a spot on the property that's maybe not good for farming or something else, you know, and, and that would be perfect to put some parking. And so I think we can address that particular concern for the community by simply, you know, designating some of the land for parking. Um, I could go on and on about, you know, we've, we've gone into some detail as far as like what this could look like operationally, um, but that's just sort of the basic framework. And I know Jim wants to speak to, you know, the where we're at with a land use study because he's been pursuing that. Um, but that's, that's sort of what, we've been talking about as a subcommittee and what we might hope to propose to town council. So to pick up where Jenna left off, first of all, we were exploring the, the uh, many different grant state grant op, uh, options. There's the ag viability programs that could dig a well or uh, install a kitchen in the barn or uh, build the uh, uh, high tunnel or replace the, uh, the uh, and these things are gradual. They would be over time, which is what the uh, Pissarro farm uh, showed us, what kinds of things that grew. Um, <clears throat> there's farmland, state farmland restoration for uh, re returning the farmland to uh, arable land where uh, trees have grown in on the edges and so forth, even though Joe uh, Wagner has been kind of keeping things going. <clears throat> um, I, I talked with Ray Carpentino, uh, who's the uh, economics uh, development guy in Rocky Hill, where they've been working on their Straska farm that they preserved. And they were able to get uh, uh, Peter Minuti, Min Minuti um, who's the Connecticut Institute for Resilience and Climate Ad Adaptation, and he's a landscape architect. And he would do a land, land use survey that would inventory all the features that we have and <clears throat> talk about you know, where would be the better places for different things. If we don't get his services, because he hasn't quite responded to our applications, uh, then we're also talking to some uh, commercial uh, landscape architect, uh, surveyor kind of people too. Um, so we have to find out, A, how much it's going to cost and then try to go for a grant to see if we can get that going as well. And then we haven't even explored all the federal grants through the uh, Natural Resources Conservation Service, of which there are many, some of which would apply to open to uh, trails and, and wooded areas and so forth. Um, so anyway, the next step would be hopefully to, to get a grant to to uh, do that survey that would show where various uh, farm operations would go, but also uh, what you guys have been thinking, looking at. And uh, I'm interested to hear about that as well. It's safe go to say, so um, just a question I had in terms of um, the work that you guys have been doing is, is really looking at the possibilities, right? and potentially yes. getting some costs and setting up that organizational structure to see what kind of benefits that would give us as a mm -hmm. as the entity moving forward, which I guess I'd be interested in hearing a little bit more about that um, organizational structure um, as a way to proceed because we are in this mid middle space of, we were a committee to get the input of the community um, to look at possibilities, but not to make recommendations. We don't have a master plan. We need we need some help with all of that stuff, um, and 
I don't know, at least that's what some of the conversations we were having on our, our subcommittees, like where do, what is, where, where are we? And it sounds like um, you all are in this, these are ideas and these are a potential way to move forward to ask the town council about this organizational structure or to see if that, um, but could you talk a little bit more about what that organizational structure would, how it would benefit us going forward and how that would all work? Anyone? Well, looking at the models for Massaro, and we also looked at Holcomb Farms, um, <clears throat> they have a board of directors um, that, that runs the whole thing. And uh, <clears throat> the board of directors hires the director, and then the director hires the farmer and farm hands and, and an education person. So you you'd need all three of those things to really have a, to achieve the, the potential that you're looking for, which is education based on the farming and so forth. And we those... also had kind of talks, what would be the possibility to incorporate sports activities into that same structure? And <clears throat> so I don't know, you know, where that would stand. Uh, Holcomb Farm has a whole committee for trails um, so they, they get volunteers and maybe get their own grants uh, to build some of the trails around here. Um, <clears throat> and, and certainly Jim, we have in the, in the wetlands part, which used to be a pasture, could be, would be the place for trails. And if we could combine with the uh, country club and the church, uh, incorporating, so you'd have trails that would go all the way through the woods, over the river and through the woods, so to speak over to Collier Brook and through the woods to Prospect Street. Uh, that would be a, a wonderful uh, uh, community resource as well for outdoor, uh, healthy outdoor recreation. But that's your department or somebody's, somebody well, else's department. I also wanted to add to that, Jim, like you said, they started out very small, very small, and then they evolved. But one of the things I thought that was very interesting with their educational programs to offer to the community, they would have what's like a day camp or a day and, and parents would drop their children off. They'd have their meals there, you know, lunch or whatever. It would be like a, um, a daycare program, but also an edu with an educational component. Parents go to work and the kids learn about, you know, raising chickens. And I mean, they had chickens on the farm and they had goats on the farm and um, not that maybe we can do that. Maybe we can't, but I mean, it was just a, give back again another opportunity to give back to the community <coughs> provide something so it sounds like the also the interest that came bubbled to the top there's opportunities for the recreation you know for the okay. fields which we can talk yeah so and, 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 and with that what would that look like with the community um in terms of the structure um people it probably opens up a little broader to folks who have those interests the walking trails the sports folks, um, so that they can provide input probably easier and more people can get involved. Is that the idea? Yeah, there would be subcommittee, especially if we if somehow we were able to incorporate sports. I, I, I'm interested to hear what you guys are thinking about, um, <clears throat> what the potential there is too. I don't know if that could, if you could have an organization that was big enough, strong enough and, and uh, varied enough uh, to run sports and edu sports education activities or whatever, um, relieving the town of having to uh, uh, a well having <clears throat> having to uh, maintain another field or whatever. Okay. That's really yeah, I think um, to to add to that, go ahead, Jen. I'm sorry. Um, I think to what both Jim and Pam we're saying, you know, what we saw at Massaro Farm, and that was one of the biggest takeaways after our, our meeting with them was just how incremental their growth was. They started off really small. They didn't just one day open with everything that they're offering today. And um, that's kind of where we saw this going. Um, you know, maybe someday it could house all these ideas and activities um, because we think 
it can support all of that, but it doesn't have to open tomorrow in that way. We can start doing things, you know, even by the end of this year, we were talking about maybe offering some activities on the property. Like ice skating. Uh, ice skating, you know, if we were able to build a rink, um, maybe that's something just to build community interest, get people onto the, onto the property um, and kind of see the possibility for what could be there. Um, but I, I do think there's room and we, and we do want to hear, you know, from the, the sports and recreation group, there's room for that as well. Um, obviously everything is pending, you know, this land use study of where everything could actually fit. Um, but I think it's possible. And, you know, I, that's one of the things we were talking about as a subcommittee is just the number of possibilities that could exist on this land um, just to be this amazing community resource and offer many of the things that the community voiced that they wanted um, out of potentially this property. So um, yeah, I think that was one of the biggest things though, was just um, that this can be incremental. It doesn't have to be everything on day one. Right, and you, you also think about, you know, when you, when you have that land use study and the farmer knows how much land he can farm, um, he would determine the CSA, what the income could possibly be that mm -hmm. following summer to know, you know, where the money is. And I think the concern with the town council was who's paying for the taxes on the house, you know, and that type of thing. I know we were tasked when we walked out last meeting no matter what we come up with, we need to come forward with plans that will be self-sufficient so that we're not going back to the town. And that's kind of how we're trying to explain from our little mm -hmm. piece of this puzzle where we saw they had a director for a, a half a day and that director then brainstorm worked with an education person half a day and had a farmer who developed how many shares he could do. So it's evolved and gotten bigger and bigger and more successful without taking money from the town. But in the Massaro farm, I guess, did get money from the farm. Is that right? Wasn't that right? Um, I think it, it was Newton that the, the town kind of got, did like the renovation, so to speak, to the property to get it ready to run. And then the nonprofit took over from there. But Massaro got a grant. It was $180,000 um, USDA grant. And they were oh. able to renovate their property at least, you know, initial stages, they did the barn, they have a beautiful barn like we do, and they were able to renovate that and kind of get it ready to go and support some of their activities. And they have um, solar panels on their barns that pay for the, the farmer's electricity and a lot of, I mean, everything was symbiotic, you know? Um, so it was, it was a great visit. It sounded like that huge uh, grant they got in the beginning was kind of an earmark from Yes. Rosa DeLauro somehow. I'm not sure how that yeah. worked out. Uh, right. They're down there in New Haven. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but uh, right. there are grants out there. Um, I think do we want to hear from the, um, the field and uh, walking trails. And I think we put open space on our list too, but you kind of covered that as well. Um, Mike, do you want to give a report or? Yeah, well, well the first thing is, is I know that uh, if everyone saw what uh, Mary had said. Oh, I didn't share it broadly. So. Oh, you didn't share broadly. Oh, I think no, you did. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, I, yeah. I didn't look at it. So basically what we, what we did is, is we broke it. We really broke it up into two things. We broke it up into the walking trails and into the, uh, into the actual field. So um, obviously with anything, you know, with, with, with doing something there, traffic is an issue, parking is an issue. Um, and then, and then there's the cost factor. Uh, we've streamed out to a couple of different areas that we've looked at for where money could come from. Um, one of the things, and then I, I, I'm going to have Dan chime in just on the part of the, uh, about the history with the athletic fields, Dan. Okay. With the, um, hold on. 
you know, you know, our fields in town, obviously it's the same, uh, you know, it, it's the same story where we have late, you know, we, we do have a lot of fields in town, but obviously a lot of the fields that you see are just open space that turned in the fields, uh, areas like Charles Wright, um, Webb, um, Highcrest, parts like that, where they just, it was an open field and they did it. And where that's a concern is more like drainage. We were going back and forth to a point figuring the difference between a synthetic field and a grass field. Now, obviously with a grass field comes the maintenance with it. With a synthetic field, there's less maintenance to it. Um, you know, and with, with, with the parking, we were looking, trying to figure out how we could figure out the parking so it's gonna accommodate anything that's done there and trying to make it so it's multi-use at certain times. Uh, one of the things, I, I, I guess the, the, the most important thing with this would have to be is how we're going to get, and, and I know it's and unfortunate Cindy's not here this evening, but how we're going to get someone to put everything together with this so it lines up so we are all on the same page. Um, Dan, can you just briefly talk about what we mentioned with the rec advisory board in regards to the field issue in town? Yeah, so um, this has been an ongoing issue for for years with the uh, with the fields. We've got a few that are in very bad shape, and um, Fuller in particular, and. Uh, Fuller also does not have adequate parking. Um, you got Webb that gets underwater. You've got uh, um, a few others that are just <coughs> inadequate. So that's that's kind of what we've been dealing with for years. Um, yeah, and you add to that additional sports that we've added field hockey and lacrosse. And then you have sports being played year round now. So soccer is played nine months, uh, baseball's played nine months, um, men's softball is played from uh, April through uh, <coughs> October. Um, so that's what you have. So when you do that, when you start having all these additional events, you run out of fields, that's kind of what's happened. So we're okay when we have really good weather. When we have bad weather, it's a scramble, both for uh, rescheduling games and if there's a lot of rain, um, keeping people off fields so they don't damage them. So that's kind of what we've been facing for the last, I don't know, five years or so. So, uh, or if not longer. So that's in general, you know, what the town was facing. And certainly the other part of it is when you have all these additional fields, they all have to be cared for and lined. And uh, that's a lot of work. So um, that's what we were looking at. That's certainly a complaint from all the sports groups. And um, you know, scrambling for field time and uh, keeping things up to date. So that's one of the problems that you know we faced. And um, so we looked at that, and we tried to take a little bit more holistic approach. So, um, for instance, Mill Woods has still got a field on it to be developed on the master plan, um, and then we were hoping another field could be developed on uh, Keisha Farm. That was. Uh, our more, uh, you know, broader goal as we look at these things. So um, that's kind of it with the history. I don't know, Mike, you want me to talk about anything else or? Yeah, well, you no, know what, um, I, I know Mike, Paul, I could jump I in. Paul yeah, I, I guess uh, maybe uh, Gina even aligned with what you were saying. We, we kind of recognize that things could incrementally develop over time. Um, However, we uh, felt we needed at least an outline of a master plan. And, and that master plan not only needs to include uh, any recommendations around sports fields or walking trails, but it needs to be done in concert with the, the work that you guys were describing. Yes. Along with that, we, uh, you know, really a, a next step for us is to figure out uh, a couple of key things, at least as it relates to the sports field, is what what does that look like? Is it a, a couple of different grass fields, the pros and cons of each? Is it a single synthetic field, pros and cons of that? Um, where would they, uh, where would we recommend that they go? 
and uh, with particular sensitivity to uh, impact on the neighborhood with traffic and, and the parking uh, that will result. Um, and so we, we were kind of looking for guidance on next steps for, and, and this applies to both the, the trails and to the athletic fields in terms of, is there a certain geography that we should be focusing on within the entire uh, farm itself? Um, and then two, what is the, how far do we go down the path of looking uh, for potentially uh, grants or additional funding sources, as well as an outline of cost uh, to do the, the various components that we would recommend. Uh, so specifically for athletic fields, our recommendation was one synthetic field with uh, some type of, of bathroom facilities, which could double as uh, concessions, you know, whether it's one building or not, parking to support um, parking to support athletic events. And then, um, and, and so really it was, you know, where we were hoping to get clarity on kind of where are we, what part of the farm are we working within and how far do we pursue uh, get, getting an assessment of, of cost to do something like this? Uh, Mike, did you want me to talk about the trails or we'll have somebody else do that? No, go, go right ahead with the trails because, uh, you know, I'm going to do anything before. Well, I'll wait till the end about the thing with the, we talked about with the, with the master plan with the consultant. I'll, I'll wait till you're done. Go ahead, hit the trails. <clears throat> and, the, and then the trails itself, we, you know, we looked at, you know, there's a couple of different uh, surface varieties. You know, there, and, but we wanted to ensure that uh, at least some or um, all of the trails can accommodate multiple use, uh, things like uh, cross-country skiing, uh, hiking, uh, biking, and, and also this idea of, of having the trails uh, lead along points of interest. So if there's particular species of trees, or if there's wetlands, or if there's different habitats, uh, that we would construct the, the trails in a way that could, uh, you know, that had points of interest along the way and could be multi-use. Uh, we did talk about a connection to prospect, but again, I think that involves some church property. Um, uh, also, and I think it involves some country club property. I'm not sure if the, the farm itself actually extends uh, right to, to Prospect Street or if there's other property that we would need to consider. And Paul, it only goes about halfway. <coughs> And then there's a huge chunk of, of uh, country club property and a funny shaped cutout of uh, church property. Um, there is a state law that, that uh, if you open up your property free of charge to the public, then you're, uh, you're not liable for whatever injuries might happen accidentally. Okay. Yeah. But uh, it's, it almost seems like uh, why would the country club want to hold on to that? Wouldn't they want to perhaps give it to us or sell it to us? Or, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't use any uh, state grants to buy this property, but <clears throat> that's open space. I wonder if you could get the similar grant to what we got for uh, Wilkes, the open spaces and watershed area grant for that, for that parcel. I don't know, but anyhow, there, there is that, it is almost uh, half of that space between uh, the end of, uh, between Tyrus Backyard and Prospect Street, actually. Yep. And yeah, and then, and then you know, do, do we, as a next step, in addition to um, looking in the grants, looking into locations, you know, do, would we have the right to reach out to the country club to see if there would be any interest in even something like that? And, and you know, how does something like that work? Um, and then, you know, location of the trails, is it on both sides of the road on, on Highland? Is it just centered on uh, the side that's on Prospect? Is there, um, you know, would there be any meaningful trails that could be put in the other side as well? Um, you know, th those were the, the points that we discussed. We, we do want to make it multi-use. Um, any questions about that before I turn it over to Mike or 
Mary? How, how so, did you my question, Paul, about the, the, the financial piece? How would this all be pay to play to pay for this or in grants? Um, well, one, we wanted to first get uh, what the estimated cost or at least an approximate cost would be. And then we would look at funding options. One would be, you know, maybe we would require the, uh, the, the sports organizations to contribute uh, some, some money towards it. Maybe there are grants that are available. The grants that I have found are have mostly for uh, economically... Uh, yeah. Economically disadvantaged areas, which Weathersfield doesn't necessarily fall within. Uh, there does seem, and, and Mary maybe could speak to this. Uh, she mentioned there seems to be more grants in in terms of uh, open space preservation, trails, those types of things. Um, and then we know, um, you know, there there's, you know, there's obviously town funding, and, and I don't want to suggest one way or another uh, whether it's capital improvement whether it's, uh, you know, the COVID dollars we received, whether it goes to referendum. I mean, there's a whole bunch of ways I would, I would look for the town leadership to decide uh, what are the options for funding. But it sounds like, Paul, all the things you're looking at, you really need that land survey done so you can figure out what can go where. Yeah, that, that's a really a big step for us because- <laughs> right. That, that was that was kind of a stickler point with us because, you know, you, you have to look at it this way. I think it's important that, you know, for as good as the study that, you know, the uh, University of Harper did, that we have to have something. And again, I, I'm going to throw it back to when we had the, the, the Mill Woods project. We had it, you know, you had certain sections of it and you had some type of game plan with it. Because let's, let's face it, I mean, in hindsight, if, if for instance, someone... We, let's say we got a grant tomorrow, we wouldn't know where to start. At least if we have some type of, you know, the land use study done where we know where, like we could put everything in one spot, kind of like what Jenna was saying in the beginning, like certain areas, where would you go? At least if we have something, we have something to work with. And I think that's, that, that's kind of an important part. And I mean, I know through this whole process over the years, even back when we were meeting in person, that was kind of like one of the big concerns that we had. And even when we did, when we were interviewing consultants or whatever, I think it's just one of those things that I, I really truly believe that that has to be the next step so that we can combine everything together. Well, we also agree with this. That's exactly, you're exactly right. One of the things that those consultants would have provided would be that land use study, what could go where and so forth. And, uh, so we need, we really do need to pursue that. Yeah. So I, I think that's our next step, even though, I mean, again, I know we have a game plan here to go to town council, but we also have to think about this. If we go to town council with all our needs and say, okay, this not, not needs suggestions, suggestions. And we go to them and, and we bring that up. You also have to remember they're going to make, okay, well, what's going to, what's going to go where? Because if I was on the town council, I would ask the same question. Okay. You want to put a farm there. You want to put a walking trail. You want to put a field where? How's it going to look? Give me a visual. So I think this has been like the kind of Achilles heels to us. And I think this really has to be our next step. Whether it's through private funding, whether the, the, the town gets involved, whatever it is. I, again, this is just my opinion, but this was from with the committee when we were talking. This is what we had come up with. Bonnie? Um, you're, you're absolutely right on that. And uh, I think that I'll send you the link to the, uh, that Peter Miniuti at UConn, who mm -hmm. I don't know if we could get her services, but it was a $10,000 item for uh, Rocky Hill. And that may, we have, the town may have to foot that instead of- Jim, how long ago was that? $40,000, pardon me? How long ago was that? Uh, that the Rocky Hill people uh, within the last year, I think. Okay. They're, they're working on, they've been working on the Straska farm for, for uh, a year or so. Okay. I okay. Think. I was just curious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Dan has like, I think with, you need more than a land use. You need like a plan, right? Because yeah. even if you oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, for nonprofit, I, um, if you're looking for, you kind of need both. They want to see a plan. 
right? Yeah. So, you you, you kind of need both. I, I, yeah. I think you need both. Because I think you need the, the land usage and I think people are going to want to see it. Yeah, how can you make a plan if you don't know what the land is right. exactly. that exactly. most appropriate for? Yes. Bonnie, um, <laughs> Dan, Bonnie, this is Dan. Um, we asked Kathy to put the park for did $40,000 aside for yeah. a master plan. And is that, that she's going to pay that to you, I take it. You mean you wonder where it's at? No, we just wanted to know if it was, is it moving forward? Because that's. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's with the capital committee because they're looking at not just general fund money, but ARPA, the COVID money. Yeah. So it was it was totally described as a part of one of the projects. So um, the capital committee has heard from everybody now, and mm -hmm. they're going to start their deliberations uh, this Wednesday. Okay. Did they and that'll probably take two or three meetings because they got a, a lot of projects to get through. Do they need any of us to go to talk about it or? No, I mean, Kathy did a really good job explaining it. Um, so not okay. yet, but they might in the future. Okay. What is that for? Using COVID money um, to do like a master plan for Keisha Farms. Okay. The, 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 the park board asked for $40,000 for this master plan, that, that's what it was. And then Kathy brought it up to Bonnie so that it would move forward. Thank you. Yeah. Jim, what was the price of the land use survey? Well, uh, Rocky Hill spent $10,000. They had all agricultural uses and educational uses. They're gonna build a barn here and do some other things. And they had, they had an incredible amount of, uh, uh, of uh, pollution to worry about. But uh, let me just read you the paragraph from Peter Minuti's sign. He says, uh, our methodology is a comprehensive land use study which inventories and analyzes all existing site features, natural and cultural, then prepares a visionary plan of all proposed land uses. Inclusive community-based methodology determines the most logical and reasonable locations for future land uses balancing conservation, preservation, and sustainable development. Um, and uh, by the way, um, Cindy and I are, and maybe anybody else that's interested are gonna Zoom with a company in, uh, I guess it's in Glastonbury that does land use survey as well tomorrow at two o'clock um, to try to see if they're, you know, what, what they're um, capable of doing or, would would imagine doing uh, might fit that that uh, plan. The forty thousand dollars was what we were going to pay that consultant uh, that we I believe that we we chose last two years ago. Yes, that was exactly that's what it was. Correct. Right, and so you know maybe maybe well I don't know. Let's see what we can find out, and 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 uh, I think we're all on the same page. That's the next step. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm wondering if there aren't things, though, we could do. So, for example, we may not know where a field will go, but we could get uh, an estimate of what a turf field would cost, um, just as an example. Uh, because, Bonnie, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't there some time sensitivity to deciding where some of the, um, in, in this case, the COVID relief money gets spent? It's got to be allocated by 2024 and spent by 2026. Well, that's a pretty generous time to. Yeah, well. Let's hope we can, we can do, meet that. Do we have an internal timeline uh, for, for um, the town to get that money allocated that we want to make? I they... think that they're thinking if they could try to do it as a part of the budget process this year. Um, and, and, you know, they also understand that, um, okay, say a road project's gonna cost 2 million, but it only costs a million and a half, that the rest of that money can get reallocated as long as it's done by 2024. Or maybe there's a project under the COVID that made sense in 2022, uh, but doesn't make sense um, in 2023. So all that money can be reallocated. Mm -hmm. But I think they're trying to do it in conjunction with um, the budget process. And how would you, is there a process we would need to follow if we were to reach out to two or three different 
turf companies to get an idea of cost of doing a turf? Um, Kathy could probably certainly get you some possible costs. As long as she knows what it is you're looking, now, obviously for which kind of field. Dan, can you bring that back to Kathy and I will do that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if I could just interrupt two secs, um, the council has a special meeting at six. So I'm going to have to get out because I got to get my other computer going and let them in. So if, if Mary, if there's any other questions, um, just let me know tomorrow and I'll be glad to answer them. Um, we do have a concerns committee that I want to give Tara and Jenna and I are on that. So Tara, you want to um, provide any? <laughs> No I'm a little, I'm a little concerned about a lot of concerns. <laughs> That's what we do. We're concerned. We, um, the concerned committee met, and I think what we discussed last week, Mary and I, um, is that we need a consultant now. It's it's time for the town to kind of step in, and um, we need a consultant to put out a plan for the area for the farm. We really do. I mean, that's what everyone is saying right now. Um, I mean, people voted on this property. The town bought the property. There's money. We just need them to allocate it so we can move forward. I mean, obviously everyone has done a lot of great work to come up with some amazing ideas of how we can make this very sustainable. Um, but we need the plan first to be able to move forward. So it's, it's kind of putting the, the cart before the horse. Did I say that right? I mean, because we can talk about every concern, but it really doesn't matter unless we decide what's going on that property. Um, totally agree. Totally so agree. I feel like we're in a, we can't meet anymore to discuss any more ideas because it's completely out of our control until town, the town council says, hey, we're going to give you money for a consultant now to yep. make a master plan. It's great, though. I, I just think it's really great that everybody incorporated the concerns in their report. Oh, yeah. Report out, you know, because I, I think that's, that's, you know, when you look at all of the survey and the listening, you know, you could see what bubbled to the top. And we're, we're yeah. looking at what bubbles to the top in terms of the uses. But you can also, loud and clear, regardless if they're a neighbor or not, the concerns were up there, too, almost everybody. Yeah. With traffic and people, to, if, if, we don't do anything on the property for whatever reason, or even if we do, who's going to take care of the property? I think some of the, the tone that I read um, from the uh, surveys is that people feel as though a lot of the land in, in the town is not properly taken care for already. So they are concerned that it's not going to be cared for the, the way that it should. But again, you know, between traffic um, depending if, if there is fields, where is the fields going to go? Is it going to lower property values of people's homes? What kind of field is it? Is it going to have a dome? Because I would imagine if it's going to have a dome to be used year, year round, that could be a major issue with neighbors. So again, to rewind or fast forward, we need to now go back to asking for a consultant to start this process, to continue it. Um, thanks, thanks, Tara. I'm just thinking about next steps. So I've heard things like let us do some additional costing um, and figure out. You know, I know Dan, you're going to look at um, the the line item in the in the budget potentially for a consultant. Um, the the 501c in that organizational structure is there something. I, I think it's the first time a lot of folks are hearing about it. So just want to make sure that mm -hmm. are we are we comfortable with that structure enough to go to town council? Do we need to maybe talk about it more the next meeting, uh, the beginning of March before we go to, I think Bonnie, oh, she already left, darn it. I did have a question for her. We wanted to see when we could get on the agenda for the second March um, meeting so that we could meet again as a group to talk a little bit more about that structure and then folding in that sports interest within it, I think is important. Right. That was a very big um, need of the town. So how does that all work? And Mary, I have a question. If, sure. if, we're to meet, if we're to meet with the council, 
what 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 actually are we presenting? That's that's a good question. That's what I'm wondering too. Is it is it this structure? Because does this structure, if it's approved and we have it well defined, um, does that enable us to do more? I, mean, I don't know. Us, that's that's, that's the, question the question I'm asking, I guess. And maybe that's something we need Cindy for. I'm I'm just curious what folks. Can we review the structure again? The proposed structure. Yeah, I don't I don't have anything in, you know, like I don't think we have anything to share other than what the way um, that Jim described it, right? Um, and Jenna. So Can I Jenna if, we're, if we become a 501c3 though, are we gonna get funds to for a field or is that more of a town? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. I, I I mean for farm use and CSAs and grants for the barn and all that. I would imagine, yes. I don't know why we wouldn't do it like tomorrow, the 501c3. Um, but regarding the sports, I don't believe a non, I don't know if a nonprofit, how would we get the money for that? Wouldn't the town be the one who has to do it? Didn't, isn't the NBA nonprofit? Didn't we just? <laughs> Oh, NFL, yeah. I think it was. <laughs> oh, NFL? NFL, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it happens. But you know well, what? When, when we were thinking of a starting point, this is kind of where we're all going back to again. You know, what's the first thing you we need to do? And they need to see a plan where if we had land use, do we know what we were going to deal with on this property? How do we start it? Well, if you started out with on the ag side and the education and that side, you know, with the CSA shares and the money coming in and the food going out and the mission statement, you know, qualifying us for 5013C, whatever it's called. Yeah. Then you have more money. Maybe the town, the sports teams would get involved with that. And then it goes from there and builds. Nothing's going to happen all at one time. It, it's just not going to, we're not going to get it all in one shot. But if they see how it grows and how our goal is for these things, because the town people told us what they wanted. Right. Everything we're talking about is what they wanted. It's just how do you get there? But wouldn't yeah, we be able to? Oh, Jenna, you were Jenna might have some insight on that. So, um, what we were talking about, and what I get the sense from Cindy, like from our subcommittee meeting, was that if we go to town council, maybe the second meeting in March, um, you know, we were hoping to make this recommendation from from our coming from our committee um, on what the a potential next step would be for this property and for this group. And maybe that does mean our group disbands as it exists now, we incorporate into a nonprofit and then it's a new group, new maybe board, board of directors um, that kind of takes it from here. And, right. or from there. And so what I had been working on the last couple of weeks is basically a business plan for this nonprofit. And it does feel a little bit like putting the cart before the horse. Um, but I guess that's essentially what a business plan is. It's just, it's projections on what a future business could be. And I'm using the term business because I don't know, do you call a nonprofit plan a business plan, but I'm just going to use the term business plan. But um, right. Um, I've been writing something up and, and it's been a little presumptuous, certainly before this meeting, knowing what you guys were going to report out about for the sports fields, but I kind of hope that it, we would just take the information that you've given and kind of deposit it into what I've already written. Um, but my hope, I guess, I don't know if the rest of the subcommittee shares this, but I'm hoping that this document at least makes a really good case to town council, whether they adopt whatever, you know, this next group for the 501c3 or whatever adopts every last thing that's in this plan. At least we're making a good case for, you know, that we've come up with something that addresses the town concerns as best as we can. We can make recommendations on the activities that can happen on the farm as best as we can, you know, pending this land use study is kind of all over the plan right now. You know, this can happen pending a land use study, um, but at least providing a framework 
to move forward with. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, that's where I'm at, I guess, like working on this and it's still, it's, I'm still working on it, but I'm certainly more than happy to share with the group, either what I have or when I like finish it. Um, Cause some sections are just purely notes that I've pulled from various minutes and, and things. Um, but I'm certainly happy to share with the group what I have just so you can see in much more detail, like what we were considering for this. Um, whether we use it or not, I don't know. I might be wasting my time doing it, but um, maybe the idea is there that it's we have some sort of document, whether it's this or something else, that mm -hmm. we're presenting from and then giving to town council to make the best case for all this work that we've been doing. I don't know if that answered your question. It, 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 but we don't really know. We, we don't have the background to project somehow some sports uh, entity that would combine or, or fit in that, or would that sports just be under the park and rec as the rest of the town uh, facilities are? Uh, I, I would think we would follow that same pattern. Yeah, yeah. We just uh, what about the walking trails? It, uh, well, I think uh, Paul, a lot of the a lot of the walking trails that exist have incorporated eagle projects and things like that. So I think there's there's a minimum amount that the town can take on, and that you know possibly uh, a nonprofit could take on that as well. Um, maybe there's some you know some parts of projects that the town crew could do. Uh, but there'd be a lot of volunteer uh, uh, activity and getting grants and so forth. Okay. Um, I guess before we hit the next agenda item, which I think we already hit, was it's a survey um, survey grant. Was that what you already talked about, Jim? Well, we kind of. Yeah. I mean. Uh, we, we, Cindy in particular was was looking for possibly using one of those ag, ag sustainability grants uh, to do the survey, but I'm not sure that we're actually we would be surveying the whole property and part of that would be be uh, other land use. So, but if you've got if there's some money in the budget to do that survey, then that's another that would be great. We wouldn't need that grant, but what we need is is the right consultant to do the survey to get what we want. Uh, um, okay. So it all, it's, it seems like there's just a lot out there that, I mean, I think, why don't we, before we close, because I think, well, before we move on, I just want to make sure that we all know sort of what the next steps are. Um, I think, I think there's interest in understanding that non-for-profit, I, I would say from our subcommittee, right, um, Mike, Paul, and Dan, just a little bit more in Tara. Um, I think that maybe next meeting we can suggest that to, that we maybe we can talk more about that to understand it. Um, that would be sure. my suggestion. <clears throat> Does that sound? And uh, I guess we need to, we, we've been pursuing the possibility of a land use survey, and you guys have been budgeting money for that. Uh, do you have any sense of, of contractors that would do that for us at this point? From your- uh, I don't think from... we, we got that far, Dan. I think it was just to put the money aside. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's definitely putting the uh, cart and the horse in the right order, I think, <laughs> getting some money. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, uh, well, I think together we should we should we should work on that option. And maybe we should be talking to Kathy oh, too about that. See what she has, and what she's uh, got on that. Right. Um, and then I think we have to. We'd like to get some clarity. You know exactly what we're going to present to the town council. And um, I know Jenna 
I think we just all, I think it, it probably makes sense for us to do that next time to, to pull everything together. Um, I briefly talked to Cindy about it. So I got some information, but I just feel like, I think we need to be comfortable with um, what, what we were, would be going to them with, in particular with some of the, the figuring out how, how sports works, works into that too. Uh, I think that's that's definitely the case. We really need to do that. I mean, we all we all definitely from coming out of this meeting agree we do need the and you know I keep saying the same thing, but we do need that you know that consultant, a master yes. plan, land yeah. use, all that stuff. I think from a committee subcommittee standpoint, certainly, I think that to the extent that we can, you know, just do some investigation on possible uh, costs of some of these things that we continue to work on is is probably not wouldn't go to waste right um and some of that information is in the university of hartford stuff too so anything else i'm missing or anybody concerned about anything else before we break yeah i think i mean i think we should we need to 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 come together before that well i don't know i guess that next first of the march meeting seems so long away and it's not but then the second of the second meeting in March is even closer. I mean, you know, yeah, it's right, it's right there. Uh, so we should share our information between now and that me meeting on the first of March, uh, so we can go through multiple drafts before we end up uh, trying to make that presentation. Right. I will definitely share what I've been working on with everybody. That'd be great. I'll Thanks share the. Jenna, thank you for doing that. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of work. Thank you. Um, and then we have a, so we can share our field, you know. Uh, yeah, we'll do ours tomorrow. I mean, we'll get something together tomorrow to so we can present it. And then um, I guess that's it. So, I mean, I think, I think we know what the next steps are. And I'll, I'll try to get with Bonnie to see when we can get on the town council agenda. Okay. Um, that would be for the second second uh, Monday in March or second the second meeting. Um, does anyone have any correspondence that they received that we need to or from from the public? Okay, so that's closed. That would be none. Um, any other business? Uh, Mary, just uh, I am going to be in Florida on that second March meeting. Is there any opportunity to do a hybrid Zoom? I assume we'll be in person meetings by that time, uh, which may or may not be a good assumption. But uh, if I could yeah. join via Zoom, that would be great. Or by, yeah, we'll, we'll just look into that, Jim. Thanks for letting us know. Yeah, thanks. Um, the next meeting, I think, is March 7th. Mm -hmm. um, is there anyone from the public? Um, I didn't see any number. I didn't see anyone. There was uh, who was who? Excuse me, but who is Susan Reed? I think. Um, I thought was there some? Was she from one of the? I guess if you didn't know, I, I was assuming she was from one of the. Um, yeah, I don't know. She's not on anymore. So. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> um. And then uh, he's going to be calling the concerned committee. I have a feeling I got to change this name. <laughs> um, and then no public comment. So we don't have any public comment. And then uh, so I guess did someone want to move to adjourn? So moved. I second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great to see right. everybody. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Good night. Oh, yeah, bye. Good night. Good night. Mary, do you want to do you want to take a walk sometime?